similar. Or it's something completely different. So the violin's like, I'm going to do it. Can folks hear me? Okay. All right, one second. All right, sorry about that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I see folks have their cameras off, which is totally fine. Um, at least for this first little bit, maybe um, when we get deeper into the discussion portion, it would be great if folks feel comfortable just being on camera um, so that we're all having the discussion together. Um, but for right now, it's all good. We're just getting back from lunch, right? Yeah, cool. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. All right, so today um, I thought it would be like a nice little change of pace uh to have this discussion um do some listening get to know each other a little bit better um and if you were in attendance of koi when i did this session um last was it in the fall uh it's totally okay this is a brand new group of people uh so i totally encourage you um to you know use whatever answers you want but also be actively listening and participating in, in the discussion um, as we have some new perspectives and some new folks in the bunch. Um, so some of the objectives and the goals for this session generally um, is that you know we want to get you all critically thinking about the role of a composer and most importantly your personal experiences because your individual life's journey and your story and your experiences shape how you interact with with others and it shapes your narrative and it shapes your voice and it shapes the music that you create. Um, public speaking exercise and practice and sharing ideas about uh, the music create uh, that we create in a brief and efficient manner. Um, so, you know, sometimes composers are either super, super brief or super long winded. And I think it's appropriate to find a nice, healthy balance that's not too uncomfortable um, and we'll we'll get to that a little bit more. Um, and we're also going to do a little bit of community creativity. We're gonna we're gonna make something together. Um, depending on time, we'll make something together. And if not, we 
figure it out. Um, so some of the goals is to get all of the participants who are attending today's session um, to practice talking and sharing their ideas with a group of people that they've never met before or with just a brand new group of folks. Um, to feel more confident in expressing your ideas um, as well as your artistry, so your concept and like the things that are most inspiring to you. Um, and then again, like depending on how much time we have for the, for, for the discussion, um, it would be dope to create a poem with you all, um, community collective uh, poem of sorts. Uh, so we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but I kind of want to just take uh, three minutes here with everybody and I'm gonna just stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, just take three, we're gonna take three minutes and do just like a really brief guided meditation. Um, so if you feel comfortable, um, I know we all just had lunch, so we just kind of need a little moment to regroup, refocus, you know, we've been in front of the computers for a while and that sort of thing. So just take some time, uh, close your eyes, and I invite you to take your next breath to simply just be more conscious. Just be aware of where you are, what you're doing, and allow your breath to bring you into the present moment right here and right now with all of us. You can breathe through your nose, inhale the cool air and nurture yourself, exhale warm air, and expel any tension or negative emotion you're holding in your body. Feel your feet connecting to the floor and to the earth. Gently correct your posture by slowly lifting your chin until the top of your head radiates towards the top of the sky. Go ahead and relax your shoulders. Feel your neck grow long, a nice stretch. Keep breathing. Relax your jaw, your eyes. Release any tension in your forehead, the muscles in the back of your neck. Notice your breath and allow it to bring you into the present moment where you are safe, relaxed, and doing something positive for yourself. Quiet your mind. Let your thoughts go by like leaves floating in a mountain stream. Bring your attention to your breath. Enjoy fully the present moment. Begin to cultivate a sense of inner peace. Go ahead and take two deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, and open your eyes when you're ready to rejoice. Beautiful. So I just, I like to do that. It's like a nice little palate cleanser, you know, gives you a moment take care of yourself before we, we jump into whatever we're gonna talk about and, and whatever you're, we're gonna be learning about. Um, so for every afternoon session, we will likely, that I'm doing this week, we'll likely do some type of guided meditation like that to help us regroup. Um, but not in the morning, we'll just do it in the afternoon post lunch. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump back to this. And, um, just some tips for this discussion. 
uh, one of the most important aspects of being a composer is communication. So how do we communicate with people when we're asking them to play our music? You know, how do we ask um, or convince other people to be involved in creating or collaborating with us? Um, also noting that it's okay to be vulnerable and to have boundaries when you communicate with others. So letting people know what you are comfortable with and, and what you aren't comfortable with and how you're comfortable being uh, addressed as. Um, and so on and so forth. And communication often does require vulnerability, but at the end of the day, you're advocating for yourself and for your art. So consider that. And to give yourself permission to be vulnerable and, on, and authentic. And that really just means to be your whole self. And I know that, uh, especially at this stage in, in growing into composers, like there's so much internal dialogue um, and there's so much back and forth between you and yourself. Oh, this is good, or this is not good. I can do this and I can't do that. Like all of these other voices telling you that you're not good enough and that, that you can't do this thing or, or whatever it may be. And it's just really important to remember that there's nobody else in the world like you. Um, and I don't say that to be cliche, it's just pure fact. And that should be really reassuring to you because no one else can be you and no one else can make the art that you make and create it how you create it. So. Just, just some tips. Um, so now I would like to, let me check time. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Uh, so now I kind of want to share this, this TED Talk video that I did a few years ago. Um, it's pretty short, it's only like seven-ish minutes. Um, and uh, just like I said about being, you know, vulnerable and authentic and that sort of thing, like uh, this is this is my my introduction of myself to you all, since some of us are meeting for the first time. Um, but also, you know, this is just so that you can understand, you know, a little bit about where I've come from and how I've gotten to where I am, and then we'll kind of get deeper into our discussion. But this will be, you know, the most talking that I will do through the discussion. So enjoy. So by a show of hands, how many people here have ever been in a place or a situation and thought to themselves, how the hell did I get here? <laughs> well, I want to let you in on a little secret. That's exactly how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> if you were to ask me two years or even two months ago if I were to ever imagine myself up on a stage in front of hundreds of people sharing some really personal details about my journey, I would have laughed in your face and called you crazy. But for the sake of my journey and the things that I want to accomplish and the person that I want to become, I realize that this unearthing experience that is taking me far beyond my comfort zone is necessary. And to be fearless is necessary. But before I share my story with you, I just want to tell you a little bit about who I am. So I'm currently a fifth year student here at Michigan State University. And next year when I graduate, I'll be the first African-American woman to receive a bachelor's degree in music composition from this institution, as well as the first MSU student to re receive a bachelor's degree in music composition and jazz studies concurrently. Thank you. I'm also a business owner. About two years ago, I started an independent singer-songwriter project called Compose the Way, where I'm the founder, the singer, the songwriter, and the bass player. And through Compose the Way, I'm in the process of developing a nonprofit that encourages young girls to pursue their dreams in both the arts and the sciences. And now I want to share with you why all of this matters. So about two years ago, I was halfway through my undergraduate career and was on track to graduate and become an environmental geologist. But before coming to MSU, I was really passionate about music and really involved in it, and I always dreamt of becoming a professional musician. Growing up, I was also really good at math and science, so naturally my family members, my friends, and mentors encouraged me to go to college and pursue a STEM degree because it would guarantee a high-paying, stable job and would be the more practical thing to do. But when I got here, I spent a lot of time trying to find a balance between what I thought I should be doing and what I wanted to do, because my definition of happiness wasn't dependent on their definition of what a practical life looked like. And I always knew that music was my passion. My favorite things to do 
are to like learn some of my favorite songs and to write music and to compose alternative film scores for my favorite movies. And growing up, one of my favorite activities to do was every year my mom and I would watch the Academy Awards together. And naturally, as a composer, my favorite category was Best Original Score. And year after year, I see the nominees and winners in this category, and never have I ever seen someone who looks like me or represents someone like me in this category. So, at 15, identifying that this is problematic, I told myself, yeah, you got it, you can do it, you know, you're really passionate about this music, you're really driven and ambitious, you should be the first African-American woman to win a, an Academy Award for Best Original Score. Just, just do it. So that's what I wanted to do, that's what I was going to work towards. But at 15, I didn't have a realistic idea of what a career in music looked like for me. I was the only musician in my family and didn't know anyone who had pursued music professionally. And when it came time to apply for college and find ways to pay for it, their practical path was my only option. And although I wasn't really passionate about pursuing geology or engineering, I really liked the idea of being a representative for people of color in the professional field because I don't know how many African-American men or women that you know are geologists, but I can't say I personally know very many myself. And I also thought it was really important to be an example for young girls and to show them that you don't have to be a white man or have an unconditional love for rocks to want to study geology and to learn about the Earth. Towards the end of my sophomore year, I really began to struggle with the fact that I never gave myself the opportunity to pursue my dreams. And so, more than ever, I think I was finally ready to put myself out there and to do it, and do whatever it took to get there. Even if that meant giving up my scholarships and having to move forward by picking up two extra jobs just to pay for school and to survive even if that meant essentially having to start my college career over and extend my academic journey from four to six years, even if that meant losing the love and support of my family and friends, which by far concerned me the most. So I took a deep breath, I did the research, I came up with a plan, and I took a leap of faith. I told myself, if music is what you really want to do, to be fearless is necessary. So I went on then to go to California, and I had the opportunity to meet some professional composers and industry professionals to identify what it really looks like to be a professional musician and work in the industry. And when I came back to MSU, I met with my professors and advisors to see if it was realistic for me to pursue music this late in my academic career. And it was. And so I auditioned for the College of Music, and I was accepted. And when I finally got to music school, I was like, okay, it's time to get to work, you know. This is what you've been dreaming of your whole life. And I met so many incredible colleagues and musicians and told them my story and shared with them the music I had been timidly writing in my dorm room for the last three years. And the best way I knew possible to share my story was with people was to put out an EP as Compose the Way. But there were still two things that were keeping me from being able to do that. One, I had no idea how to put out a record. And two, I wasn't sure if I was completely ready to share all of this music with the world and have them to be able to have access to it at any given point in time. So, I took another deep breath, and I came up with another plan and reminded myself to be fearless as necessary. And from there, I went on to start a GoFundMe and entered a pitch competition to share my story and was able to raise over $2,500 to record and distribute my EP last April. And since then, I've been invited to do performances in the greater Lansing and Detroit areas, as well as New York City last summer. Compose the Way embodies the notion that in this life, you are the leader, the composer, the writer, the storyteller that gets to decide the life in which you, ch in which you choose to lead. As Compose the Way, I want to continue making music and being a strong representative for not only women, but women of color in this industry. I want to inspire young girls who have been told that their dreams don't matter, that they'll never accomplish their goals because society deems otherwise. I want to do it all. And it's important to remember that in this life, you have the power and the ability and the capacity to take on the world and become somebody no one thought that you could be. And it's never too late to change the course of your life. I've already begun composing my way. What's keeping you from composing yours? Thank you. Okay, beautiful.
So that was my my whole like story. Um, I am going to. Okay, great. So now that we've had a chance to hear a little bit more about me and how I came into the role of, of being a composer or into doing anything music related, um, you all come from various backgrounds, different from me and different from each other. Um, which is incredibly valuable. So I think this discussion um, will be great for everyone. And, and the best way to make it great for everyone is for everyone to participate. So I, for the sake of um, just making sure that everybody gets a chance to talk well, uh, call off some names to share. But the first, so the first question um, for our discussion here, um, since we're all young composers um, or music makers in some capacity, uh, I would just like to go around and everyone share, you know, a pretty brief answer about like what you think a composer is um, by your own definition. So let's start with Lucas. My definition of a composer would probably be someone who organizes sound in really any matter um, and generally seeks to create something new or combined pieces into something that has not been done before. Cool. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, Tanya. Um, I think my definition of a composer would be maybe someone who um, creates a sound or inspires someone by what they do and like can relate like the oh, I can't talk <laughs> um, like someone who creates music that can relate to someone. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much, Tanya. Nathan. Um, well, there's no, there's nothing really original in music. There's a set amount of notes, really, even if you go outside the normal 12 tone scale, every note has been played before. So a composer is somebody who can see a pattern in all of those notes and create something unique. Well, I love these answers. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Landon. Um, I think a composer, uh, well, I think oftentimes it's the job of a composer to um, manipulate someone's emotions and to help or to, to help others understand or, or convey um, an emotion or feeling through a piece of music. Awesome. Thank you so much, Landon. Uh, Mary Kate. Um, I think a composer, like you said in your TED talk, is a storyteller, but I think obviously through the medium of music, but it's also like they're observers, they're watchers, they don't just, they use music to express themselves, but they also use music to express what they see around them. Very cool. Thank you so much. Um, Joe. you hear me? Yep. Okay. okay. Probably just like somebody that like puts things together to make something. Awesome. Uh, Tim? Um, well, I'd say music and every art form, it well, music transcends words. So I would say that music, instead of painting space it paints time and you can make that in any way you want and it's ex it's extremely personal emotional thing paints time i had to write that down thank you i like that paints time uh zeka 
Um, I just think a composer is someone who writes music. Awesome. That's a great answer. Thank you. Clara. Um, I'd say it's probably just making art through music, either for like self enjoyment or to like share with others. I guess. Awesome. Thank you so much. Becca. I'm not sure I can really say anything new, but I really liked what um, Nathan was saying about how there's nothing that hasn't been played before. And um, oftentimes, like I forget that like, or even arrangers, like they are considered, I consider them composers still, even if they are just like listening to something and creating their own. And so I think it's kind of like arranging anything and like being able to like record it or share it um, in some way can be composing. Awesome, thank you so much. Anthony. Um, well, I think uh, composers, well, I think music is organized sound and time. And so a composer is somebody who organizes sound and time, if that makes sense. It's awesome. Thank you. Lawrence. Well, I think a composer is just someone who makes music in their own style. I love it. Thank you so much. And Eric. Um, you can probably hear my air conditioner blasting away. Um, I kind of like what Florence just said, but it might be because she just said it and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So as you can see, like everybody had a pretty different answer. Um, we were all talking about pretty much the same thing, but all came to a different conclusion of of what the objectives of being a composer are, or what it what it really means um, from the outside perspective, potentially like what a composer is. So um, the next question we have is, what does it mean to you to be a composer slash a creator? And um, I think for the sake of time, we will just take a couple of people for this question. So if anybody just wants to go ahead and unmute themselves and share, what does it mean to you to be a composer? Um, before, um, I, I, I just saying, I'm gonna stop at like 205 or 210 because I have to go down to the music place to have a lesson. So I'm just gonna say that. No problem. So, yeah. Um, I can share something. Um, I feel like, like, uh, making music is like a craft, like you have to, uh, do it every day to kind of like what Jordan with your, like, uh, your species counterpoint, like it's a muscle, you got to practice it, but I feel like at its peak, um, the songs that I'm the songs that I write are songs that I need to create in order to uh, process emotions. So I'll make music just for the sake of making it and like staying on top of the craft of it. But what it means to me at its deepest is a way for me to kind of discover how I feel about something and work through something that I couldn't um, with just words. I think. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Eric. Does anybody else want to jump in there? Um, for me, um, for Are what you it laughing means at me, me, Tim? Are you laughing at no, me? No, no. Uh, Are you laughing at me? I'm not laughing at you. Something else is happening. <laughs> me, me, um, Clara and Landon are all in a group and, uh, Anyway, so for me, being a composer is just to create the best music I can 
and for um uh, and to have it have an impact on people and to change things and to inspire people Beautiful. simple but i mean that's what it is for me yeah i and that's that's a great answer um it's your answer is supposed to be what it means to you so if it's short and sweet that's that's even better um let's take like one more person before we answer the next question um i can go go for it um i'd say it's just like like no matter how long you've been a musician just adding on being able to compose stuff and like express express yourself in that way um i think it's really cool um and i guess just like sharing music that's like from you like that means a lot to you i guess is also really important um yeah that's all beautiful thank you so much all right our next question is why is composing slash creating music important? Um, and that can be answered from a personal perspective, you know, why you think in general, uh, but we need three, three good answers. Well, not even good answers. We just need three answers. Okay. For me, it's important because you can reach people with it and you can and everyone can know your emotions and like when i say it it sounds weird but it's the thoughts and the emotions that are in your head and you're bringing them out for everyone to hear and to consider yeah thank you tim building on what tim said i would say that composing is important um if it's a form of it's a form of expression um and it's a way to express emotions that may be difficult to convey with words in or other sorts of communication because emotions are fickle things you can't really always describe them in the most <sighs> most accurate manner whereas with music you have so many options and so many different ways to describe something it's it's just a sort of another nah, I'm going off on a tangent here, but it's a sort of language to help communication between people, pretty much. Absolutely. And doing that. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lucas. Anyone else? Um, this last week, I was at a church camp, and um, me and my sister went and we did not know anybody there and we were able to instantly connect with people because she played the guitar and would sing for people and like people would just join in and play with us and um, she would share her own original songs and like not only did it like impress people and they were like oh I want to be your friend now it was another way to connect and um, like they were talking about like sharing your emotions but it's a really easy way to connect with people because they also love music and they also love hearing new things. And so um, I think that's why it's important. So you're able to like kind of share the human experience with others. Amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. So exactly. So this whole discussion is essentially to get us all remembering and, and thinking deeper about the reasons why, um, you know, we have decided to be here this week creating music together, getting to know other people who create music. Just as Becca said, you know, being connected to a sense of community. And like Luke is saying, you know, finding a way to express our emotions through a, a universal language um, and, and finding a way to express ourselves ultimately um, in the most authentic and genuine way possible. Um, so that's pretty much why I wanted to have this discussion and, and to, to get us all thinking about like, you know, sure we we spend all this time doing the thing but like sometimes um it can be hard to remember like why you you started in the first place you get caught up in too many projects or you know you've just been doing it for so long that you're just going through the motions and trying to figure the things out um or maybe you haven't even considered you know why on a on a deeper level you or some people around you consider um composing and creating music and its importance and that sort of thing um, 
so beautiful. That was I really loved everybody's answers. Um, and again, there's no there's no right or wrong answer, and it's it's all about the individual. Um, and so this last part of what I wanted to do together um, is to create a poem um, as a group. And the reason why I want to do that is because we don't all need to be at like a specific level of music making or, or understanding of the musical language to contribute anything to this. Um, and we're all creators of something. So I wanted to just spend some time as a community uh, writing a poem together. So um, it can be about anything. Everybody has a contribution. Uh, has to contribute at least one line. Um, and I will contribute the last line. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna go through who is in my box right here. So the first person who's gonna give us a line, and this can be about anything. It's, this is literally like your, your, your line can be whatever you want it to be. So uh, the first person is Becca. Are we going for a rhyme scheme here or? Whatever you want. One Ooh. stanza. Um, let's go with, is a stanza like one line or is it like a paragraph type thing? Just one line. Okay, um, let's go with it's tangerine weather. Beautiful. It's tangerine weather. Okay. Eric, you're next. It's tangerine weather. And I am upside down. <laughs> Uh, Lucas. The sunset swirls into the summer brown. The sunset swirls into the summer brown. Did I get that right? Yep. Beautiful. Thank you. Clara. Um, I guess people in the sky and <laughs> birds on the ground. People on the sky, birds on the ground. Thank you. Tanya. Everything is inside out. <laughs> Everything is inside out. Nice. Uh, Nathan. Um, okay. Um, Man. Um, <laughs> the birds fly with the wind through their feathers. The birds fly with the wind through their feathers. Thank you, Nathan. Mary Kate. With the kumquat sun glistening. With the kumquat sun. You said glistening? Yeah. Glistening. 
Sorry, the hot smoke comes up. Listening. Thank you, Mary Kate. Anthony. Uh, orange sheep le uh, leap over. Uh, orange sheep leap over fences. There. Orange. Beautiful. Over fences. Thank you. Landon. And to me, an awareness comes. And to me, an awareness. Thank you, Landon. Joe. They were out of Skittles at the supermarket. They were out of I love Skittles. <laughs> at the supermarket. Lawrence. The sky is green and the grass is blue. The sky is green and the grass is blue. Whoops, 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 whoops. No, go back. Did we get everybody? Zeka. Zeka, are you still there? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. How about, how about you give us the title? What do we want to call this? It can literally be anything. Um, I don't know, whatever you want it to be. It's whatever you want it to be, though. Oh. Um. The weather. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Zeka. All right, so we did it. We wrote a poem together. The weather. It's tangerine weather and I'm upside down. The sunset swirls into the summer brown. People on the sky and birds on the ground. Everything is inside out. The birds fly with, with the wind through their feathers with kumquat sun glistening. Orange sheep leaps over fences, and to me an awareness comes. They were out of Skittles at the supermarket. The sky is green and the grass is blue. That's a pretty dope poem, y'all. Great job, everybody. Um, so we're about at time, but this beautiful poem that you all wrote, I'm going to copy and paste it in the chat so you have it. Um, I think the last time I asked folks, you know, to take this poem that we wrote together and find a way to utilize it um, in a piece that you're composing. It doesn't necessarily have to be the piece that you're composing for this camp this week that you wanna get recorded. But now that you were a part of creating something together, you know, see if it inspires you to create a piece of music um, in any way, shape, shape you wanna use the text. So, uh, just the last few things to remember, uh, making music is a gift and be open to all types of music and music making. Try stepping out of your comfort zone um, when creating something new. No question is a stupid question and whatever you have to say is worth saying. So please say it loud and proudly. Um, thank you so much, everybody. And if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. But otherwise, thank you, the, uh, thank you for teaching the class. This is a lot of fun. Oh, thank you for participating. Thank you for being here. In the prior session, you mentioned sending out an email. I think with um, uh, the staffs we were using in Note 
or not notified in MuseScore. Are you going to send that out or? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just haven't done it yet. I had to eat lunch too. <laughs> but I will do that. Um, Eric, is this, is this, a, are you taking over this Zoom for your session now? Is that what's happening? I. Or is there another, is there another Zoom link? I'm just going to assume there's another Zoom link. So okay. we'll, we'll get out of here and then I'll log back in. Okie doke. Um, okay. Nice job, Jordan. All right, thank you. I'll just, I'm going to email the poem to everybody. I have everybody's email addresses. So I'll send it with the, the counterpoint stuff. Cool. All right. See y'all. <laughs>